Hello everyone and good morning. Welcome to our live feed update for April 3rd. I'm your host, Aaron Armstrong, and with me today, it's Chantel. How are you doing, Chantel? I'm doing well, but how are you doing? Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Taryn. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Taryn. Love from Janelle. She's oh, you're a star Janelle. and she's a star. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, there's a star. And I was like, oh my God, there's a doll in there. Chanel! <laughs> my friend JoJo made it for Christmas. So this was his star ornament for Christmas. There you go. And then he gifted it me. He sent it in an Uber on my birthday. So I'm. this is a re-gift, but it's um, a big brother lover re-gift. So I think it will be welcome oh, here today. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, you're <laughs> You're actually the second person to sing me happy birthday on stream. A Bruno last night uh, had a, a wonderful rendition of happy birthday Aww. on I Twitch. Mean, that's the one thing that I, that's, I, I usually do for most of my friends is like they always get a happy birthday message um, of singing. I've done it since I was like a kid. So it's it's something truthful from me. Well, don't don't tell Bruno, but uh, <laughs> you're a much better singer than him. <laughs> Is that, is that recorded? I'm going to go watch it after. <laughs> it is. It was last night. Uh, all right. Well, we are here to update you on everything that happened yesterday on the Big Brother Canada 9 live feeds. And uh, the, the Big Brother gods did bless us with uh, a good day to talk about here on my birthday. Um, <laughs> Because uh, it was a fun, it was a fun day of feeds. There was a lot, uh, a lot going on. There are uh, cracks in the foundation of the triangle. Um, we've got uh, diff two different conflicting interests and plans going on. We have people on the outside trying to influence the power. Uh, this is all of the gameplay that we were missing in the last week, uh, and uh, it's it's exciting stuff, Chantal. Absolutely. Um, you know, I've been kind of watching and wanting people to strategize and try to put, you know, plans into action. And it seems like this is the first week where people are actually playing Big Brother, really, you know. Um, my, my biggest surprise has been Brayden. I thought Brayden has been doing a really good job with, you know, how he's been interacting, especially with Beth and the Triangle. Um, I think that he's doing some good work, and I know that people are thinking that he's just a layup and, you know, Beth wants to bring him to the end, but I think that he could start be, to be making a case for himself. So I'd say Brayden is the MVP of the uh, new uh, scenarios, the new strategy right now. Yeah. Well... We started the day, uh, and I had mentioned this yesterday morning, uh, with uh, Beth and Jed talking. Now, Beth had kind of floated the idea of a Vic backdoor the night before, but after sleeping on it, talking with Jed, she was kind of like, I've kind of decided, shouldn't do that. Uh, shouldn't do that. Wait to the double. I don't want to, you know, do too much here with, with Vic. Um, just stick to the row and Terra nominations is kind of what I'm thinking. Um, and, uh, and back away from the Vic thing. Jed agrees. Um, and so it seems like, it seems like this, uh, this Vic backdoor idea is kind of shelved here, uh, for Beth, uh, at the start of the day. Yeah, I think that it's, that's the right idea. Um, you know, Victoria is the type of person you do want to get out on a, a back door. I know we, we probably want to watch her fight for herself for an entire week, but um, Vic is a back door target for sure. So I get the reasoning, but I do also think that it's because Beth is a little bit scared of the wrath of Victoria if she were to pull the trigger there. So. It's a little fear, right? Um, but but like even even in the even in the back door, it seems like she like uh, initially she was thinking Beth might be the back door, or sorry that Vic might be the back door. Um, but in in the early parts of the morning, she's talking to Jed. It seems like she may not even go that far, um, and she's gonna talk to the cameras um, and uh, kind of explain her reasoning, right? So um, she says, "I still I gotta do something." I can't go to the end with these guys um, and what she wants to do with her game. She feels like she's there. She feels like she feels like she's going to be in the final two. But the problem is she knows she can't beat Jed. She knows she can't beat Ty. And so 
in order to get there, what she wants to do is get to the end with Tina and Brayden. That's her ideal final three. And in order to make that happen, she wants to keep Row this week, if she can. She wants uh, to uh, evict Tara. Tara is going to be the person that she wants to have go home this week. Keep Row around. Uh, maybe try to pretend to the guys that Row is willing to work with them. And then, ideally, Row turns around and evicts Ty next week. And she is giddy about the idea <laughs> of Ty leaving next week. That would be great for her game. Um, that's that's the plan. That's where she wants to go. Yeah, I mean, it's a, a decent plan, but what a what a boring final three that would be. I mean, it, it probably is the best idea for her. I think that she could do decently against either of them, but um, it would just be so boring. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's sound it's sound thinking. I th I'm glad she's actually thinking about a few steps ahead. Most of the players this season so far have kind of been only been dealing week to week with what's been going on. And so at least she's kind of trying to carve a little bit of a path for her. So I think that it's good that she's kind of looking ahead a little bit more than than she has been up until now. Yeah, I mean, she's uh, she's kind of in the Enzo spot here, uh, part of a trio and uh, with two people ahead of him that w that that he can't beat, um, when does Enzo turn was always the question. And uh, and Enzo never really had you know the he had an early HOH, never had an HOH in the jury phase to really do something about uh, about his position in the game. And this is a a jury phase HOH for Beth where she can do something about it, and she wants to. Now at this part portion of the day, her reads are all off. She thinks Tara's doing nothing for her against the guys, and she thinks that Roe is the only possibility. She does not realize that Vic is coming after her, and so she thinks that she can uh, table the Vic idea for now. Um, she's th she thinks that everyone loves and trusts her in the game, uh, which is not quite the case. Um, and so uh, this is I, I I even I was tweeting about it at the time. I was like, this is great. It's a great mentality, great motive for Beth. Yes. But she is she her, her reality is is all wrong. Um, and I talked about it yesterday. I said the uh, the trick for Tina and Tara will be to um, to to get Beth to see the reality, which is that Vic is coming for her and and to get Beth to go against Vic. And they had the information. Uh, and we've seen this fail before. Kyle and Roe tried to throw Vic under the bus. They did it in all the wrong ways. Um, Tina had a plan. And so we're going to have to see if Tina can get into Beth's head and uh, and get her to look at Vic in the right way. Well, I'm just really happy that at least this week with Tara being in the hot seat, most likely at this point, um, that Tina is having to put in a little bit of work here. We're kind of seeing how she plans on maneuvering um, Beth to get her agenda across. And so I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing this side of, of Tina emerge, just to just to see her playing, because like she's in such a good position. Now her number one is in a risky position. Let's see what she what work she can do. So I'm happy. <laughs> exactly, and, and that's, that's really what like I I've been consistently one of the lowest people on Tina uh, in the stock watch week after week. And the reason is because I've wanted to see her play more actively. And so this is the opportunity here uh, for her to play a little more actively. Um, and uh, she she's going to start doing it. Uh, Kiefer and Tina are going to talk. Kiefer lets Tina know that Roe and Tara are going to be up. Roe will be the target. Um, but, uh, that, uh, that, that's, that's kind of the game plan. And so Tina has the information, um, she's going to be playing chess with Tara. Jed comes in and, uh, Tara does most of the talking, but, uh, again, Tina had kind of set Tara up like, this is how we should approach this. Um, I, I need you to, we need to not be just like outright saying Vic's name, but we need to get the information across that Vic has been trying to, pin us against Beth um, and so that Beth can realize kind of on her own that Vic is coming for her, right? Uh, and then, you know, if if we go too hard on Beth that's or, or on, on Vic, that's no good. Uh, we need to do it in the right way. Um, and that's that's how they're going to, going to approach this conversation with Jed. 
Uh, the one part about this conversation, because I think that what they were doing, like they're doing a lot of really good things. They weren't saying Victoria's name or whatnot. But the Tara and the two we I, two weeks I voted with you yeah. like line, I was starting to yell at my television every sort of my computer every time I heard her say that. It's like you were going with the house, you weren't going to be able to flip it. You didn't do them any favors. They had the votes with or without you. Like stop pretending like you you did something completely against your will and you did it for them because you wanted to show trust. I was like irritated by that. Yeah, th this is this. This is a little bit like uh, D and D, uh, Dan and Dave, for, uh, who made Game of Thrones, uh, where like uh, when they had the source material from the books, it was great. Anytime they tried to do <laughs> anything off script, it was terrible. Uh, no pun intended. Terrible. Uh, and uh, anytime Tara does anything that Tina hasn't told her to, it's terrible. Um, she her, she opens this conversation with yeah. I've been so loyal to you guys. I've been I've been voting with you every week, um, and uh, she's like, uh, Jed is like, well, you've been voting with the house. Yeah. Like, what? Like, it's not loyalty. You, and if you wanted to get your agenda across, like, do what's best for your game. Like, it, it, I don't have, shouldn't have to feel guilty for the fact that you did something against your own will. Like, you have your your votes, your vote. You don't have to do anything you don't want to do. Like, even if it's voting against the house. Like, anyways, I was just so annoyed, and that was a repeating theme that she kept on coming up with. And I was like, at that point, I'm like, I want you to go, Tara. I want yeah. you out of here. Especially like, I don't even want this flip. <laughs> Especially when he knows that she tried to flip the votes like every week. And the only reason it didn't work is because she failed. Like, <laughs> it's, it's a terrible argument. Terrible. Uh, yeah. Um, but uh, Tina does bring up, there There are bigger moves to be made. There, there is an instigator in the house. Um, and this is when they start sort of alluding to the idea that uh, somebody has been putting it in their heads that Beth, is coming for them is saying a bunch of things about them personally uh, tara in particularly in particular um and uh tara tara says that she's been told that beth is coming after me by this instigator um and jed is like oh, who are you guys talking like, jed thinks it's kiefer um and <laughs> like no it's it's, it's fake um but, but you can't let her know that we're saying this we're so scared of her um and uh that that sort of fear and reluctance to bring up the name and uh, you know as opposed to you know the, the the sort of like shout it from the rooftops uh vic is terrible um it definitely helps sell this um and he says oh oh well beth is ne beth has never said any of those things about you. i can promise you that um and, but but you know what vic has been telling beth all sorts of things about about you guys as well. Um, so she clearly is instigating here, um, and so uh, it seems like well, this this is an opportunity to to make a big move for Beth. Uh, she can really uh, do something big. Take the instigator out. The, the, Arissa hasn't even announced that jury has started yet. Maybe this is the last person before jury. Maybe uh, Canada has a vote, um, and it's only going to be a six person jury. This is the time to make a, a move like this for Beth. Um, and uh, it's like, oh, all right. Um, it's uh, new information here for Jed. Yeah, and like he, I wasn't sure how he was feeling about this information because it seems to us, or to me anyways, it seemed pretty obvious this as an, a strategy, like to not have their her friend on the block here. Um, but I like the way that he handles them. Like he kind of lets them be like, seeming like they're they're turning him and getting them to see their ways. Um, I was just hoping that he was gonna have a little bit more discernment and be like a little bit more critical thinking about that old scenario. Um, and so, yeah, it's giving him a little more credit than maybe he deserves, but I do like how he interacts with them when they're having game talks. Like he doesn't come across as like, you know, intimidating or like, or mean or kind of like shut them down. Like he does listen it seems and he does, you know, appear to um, see their arguments, so. Yeah, I liked it. Well, he's going to he's going to run over to Beth and let her let her know about the conversation. He says they were alluding to this person for so long. They were so scared to say her name. Eventually said it was Vic. And they they said that uh, that she's been, you know, feeding them information about you. Um, and she's like, well, that's that's not good. And he's like, well, I told I told them that she's been saying things to you, too, just to explain away anything that they might have heard that she's maybe like instigating back and forth. But Beth is like, well, that's the thing. 
uh, Vic hasn't said a word to me about Tara. Uh, if she's telling Tara things about me, she is not telling me things about Tara. She's not just trying to get us to go after each other so that she can sit back. She's actively trying to get Tara to come after me because she wants me out. Um, and uh, and Jed's like, well, well, yeah, probably. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's, that's probably what's happening. Um, and so she's. This is when things start to click for uh, for Beth uh, a little bit at least. Um, and she's like, all right, well, uh, well, maybe we need to reconsider this backdoor Vic thing again then. Uh, but Kiefer's going to interrupt them, uh, while they're talking and, and we know that Kiefer has been working with Vic. Uh, we know that, uh, that she is somebody that, uh, that he has, has had, uh, dealings with in the past. Not sure exactly what stance Kiefer is going to take. Um, but Kiefer comes in. And uh, right away is like, uh, you're not going to waste this HOH on Tara, right? Like everything he talked about with Tina, trying to make sure that Tara is safe. Kiefer is loyal to the pre-90s, not loyal to Vic. Kiefer is actually going to continue to push, uh, uh, you know, based on that conversation with Tina, for Vic to be the back door. Um, and he is going to be an additional support for, uh, for that plan. I actually, I was surprised that um, Kiefer wasn't more loyal to Victoria. I really thought that it was probably a good idea to kind of work with her. Um, obviously, she's in the hot seat this week, but like it, them two as a final two would be pretty exciting. And like I would, I, I was kind of like rooting for that to be the way that the the, the season was going to go. So the fact that he's kind of changed his not changed his tune, but he's decided that he wants to stick with the pre nineties, stick to a certain degree with the sunsetters, and kind of throw. Victoria out. I was I was surprised by that. Yeah. Uh, well, Beth agrees. She's she's not going to waste an HOH on Tara. Um, so she has changed her mind from earlier this morning. <laughs> uh, a new opportunity has presented itself, and uh, and it's exactly the kind of opportunity she wants. A big move that she can make that's in her best interest and not in the guy's best interest. This is everything that Beth wants in the game, and uh, and she says yeah, absolutely. You know what, Roe or Vic will be going home on my HOA train. I do not want Sarah to go home. Um, she plans on taking Ro to Wendy's and seeing where his head is at in terms of the guys. Uh, and Kiefer's like, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. We're not going to do Vic first. Uh, Ro is, Vic is the backup plan. Uh, I'm just trying to keep Tara safe here uh, and get rid of Vic if Ro is already safe. But Ro should be the first. We can't trust anything Ro says. Uh, and <laughs> and Jed is kind of like, yeah, I mean, what what could he possibly say? And Beth's like, well, I'll, I'll talk to him. I'll see what he says. Um, and this is this is Beth knowing that, J that Ro, it doesn't matter what Ro says. Beth is going to come back to them and say that Ro promised the world. Absolutely, and I think I mean, it's good that she's already um, told them that um, that he has come up to them and said things like, hey, we should work together. So it's good that that's already happened, I think it was last week. And so with her retelling any of this and her entertaining these conversations, it's not going to be a surprise to them, and it's not going to really tip them off that she wants to keep him so he could actually go after them, Jen and Ty. So I think it was, she I think she did lay some groundwork. I'm, I'm, I'm happy about this with Beth. It was a good job, I you think. Know, and this whole thing would be so much easier if she hadn't spilled the Ro info from from last week, uh, and if Ro hadn't screwed up and told her uh, or gone too far with it, um, because uh, they were okay with Ro until Beth told them that, and now they're that now they're not. That was such a huge mistake on both of their parts, and they're both still dealing with it. Yeah, no, okay, I can see it from that perspective, but it's like now though that it's out in the open, at least her having these conversations with them, taking him to Wendy's is not going to look kind of right. ooh, sketchy. Like, why is she like trying to, you know, get in with him? So I think that it being out in the open, it's good that she's taking him to Wendy's because they know about it. Yeah, that's and that's and that's the idea. That's the plan. Like uh, the whole reason to take him to Wendy's is to uh, provide like an opportunity for her to um, to like this is a game talk and then come back to the guys with like he's pr he's promising the world guys this is this is great um so uh Kiefer uh Kiefer says that um like that you know we v uh, Beth is worried that what if Vic wins the veto and uses it on Roe that's worst case scenario she wants one of them gone for sure so if Vic wins the veto use it on Roe then she's screwed uh and Kiefer's oh no no way, no chance she uses the veto on Ro. Uh, I've been getting in Vic's head 
about Ro. I've been telling her that he's rich. I really want that to happen, though. I wrote down, I'm like, ooh, that would be a really juicy scenario if that happened. Who would she put up, Brayden? Would she just do that? She would or? put up Brayden, yeah. Okay, well, maybe that's not that exciting, but <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I, I do, I wouldn't mind seeing that happen um, just because like, I, I like seeing people's plans get foiled. <laughs> well, um, Vic did promise that, or uh, did at least indicate that she would use the veto on Roe uh, if she won um, to Roe, but she did not, uh, she did not, she said she wouldn't use it to the, to the guy. So uh, I, I don't think she would actually use it unless unless she finds out that the backdoor plan might have gone through which is possible if Roe outs it to her if she has the veto because he knows he's going to go home otherwise but uh anyway uh, Kiefer says Kiefer says uh I've been I've been telling Vic that uh, that Roe is rich um and uh and Jed's like well does that matter it's like uh to a poor person yeah it matters a lot I know I'm a poor person well, I mean, it's true. It's kind of like that whole, you know, he's a firefighter in, in Survivor argument. We can't let the firefighter get into the end. He's too good of a person. So I, I could see them being like, you know, he doesn't need the money. Like, he doesn't need to to win this and take it from one of us. So I, it's, it's, I could see it being a, a good rationale as to why he needs to go, not to win. Yeah, it is. It is. It's. I mean, this is sort of a a, a silly example of of this, but uh, <laughs> but Kiefer uh, has been very fixated on Roe uh, for for a long, basically since the uh, the pantry incident. Um, and he uh, he. I mean, it, there are often there's lots of like Beth Bath bashing. My Beth Bathing. I keep saying that. <laughs> well. Beth, say this f three times fast, everyone. Beth bashing Beth sessions. Beth bashing. Ah, <laughs> see? I thought I was going to get it too. Beth bashing. <laughs> Um, there's plenty of Beth bashing sessions, uh, but there's also a lot of row bashing sessions when it comes to uh, Kiefer. Um, and uh, I've definitely started to see some uh, some some uh, some backlash from this uh, toward Kiefer that uh, people are uncomfortable with the ways that he is talking about Roe, especially because Roe has basically not said a word about Kiefer uh, since the uh, since the original sort of uh, pantry incident. Um, so it seems particularly one sided at this point and uh, and definitely uh, is, is, I think, uh, go going a bit over the top. Yeah. I'm wondering if it's stemming from the the unseen roast session, um, you know, feeling like now he has free reign to kind of be humorous about the house guests and particularly Ro. I, I guess, I mean, but like his roast was terrible. Like his roast was really <laughs> mean. He was like, oh, Kiefer's roasts were all great, except for the Roe one where he was just like, Roe is so ugly. Like, what is that? That's not a roast. That's just no. insulting somebody. That's, what are you doing? Yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> I'm, I'm wondering if that's why they haven't shown it on TV yet. Um, but I think that it probably opened the floodgates of him being able to talk poorly about Ro is mm -hmm. because he, he, I think he's in this the mindset of like, oh, I'm just like roasting him. I'm just roasting Ro. Well, I see. I, I think that um, I, I think that because I, and this is kind of how it always works. We see this in Br Big Brother all the time. Actually, we saw it a lot on Big Brother 22 where. Um, you know, especially with Nicole Anthony, right? Where uh, Kiefer feels like he was wronged by Roe. Uh, he feels like he was uh, essentially, you know, he he is the victim in this in the situation. He was the the wronged party, um, and uh, and that sort of gives him the justification now to to do and say whatever he wants. Um, and uh, and and he kind of hasn't let that go. Um, and so. Uh, I, it's definitely gotten to a point where it's like that you are now doing things that were worse than the original offense. Uh, you are no yeah. longer in the right here. Yeah, I mean, at one point, you, if you're going to say it's okay, it's done, it's in the past, we're moving forward, you kind of have to leave it there or he's going to definitely start, what she has, start looking like the bad guy. Mm -hmm. um, and if he's going to be you know, throwing insults and, and saying things about him that aren't justified, like, I mean, it's never really justified, but, like, aren't justified in the moment, um, yeah, it's not, it's not going to be a good look. So hopefully he'll get some perspective soon and kind of tone it down. Yeah. 
Uh, so the uh, the plan for now is still uh, Row is the target, but if Row happens to win, then uh, then they'll still maybe consider that Vic backdoor. Um, Tina is going to talk with Ty. Uh, this conversation doesn't go super well. Uh, Tina is going to pitch to Ty that Row may not be the move. Vic is the bigger threat, but Ty is just not going to buy it. Uh, Ty is not on board with this uh, idea. Ty is still more on board with taking out Row. Uh, especially after last week when he heard that Roe was, was coming for them and trying to get into Beth's head about coming for them, right? Uh, so uh, so this is, is basically going to go nowhere, um, but uh, uh, it, it is, it, it's, it's an indication of where Ty's head is at. Yeah, and, you know, it's not really right now in his best interest, even, like, you know, with the information that Tara is giving for him to get rid of Victoria, like, yeah. or for her to be the target anyways, um, because if, if, Victoria wins. I don't think Victoria's coming after Ty. I think she's coming after Beth, which exactly. is not Ty. So he knows that Rose coming for him. So this argument is not really valid, and it doesn't really make any sense for him to go and turn on Victoria, or even talk about turning on Victoria to get her mad about something that he actually doesn't really want, and it's not really in his best interest. So she might have wanted to say something that Victoria said about him specifically, um, if he wanted to maybe influence him, but not with what she what she gave him. Mm -hmm. So uh, Beth is going to talk to Tara now. The basically Wendy's is going to happen, um, mm -hmm. and um, and Beth is going to uh, to talk to Tara after Wendy's and tell Tara that she is going on the block, but she's not the target. Uh, Roe would go over her, and there's another option out there. And and Tara does the same sort of thing with Beth, where she starts <laughs> to bring up Vic, um, talking about the things that Vic told her uh, that Beth said about her. She's worthless. She doesn't deserve to be there. Um, Beth is later going to say, I did say those things. Vic really did own this. Um, but in the moment, of course, she's, I would never say such personal <laughs> things about you. It's such a lie. Vic has said things to me about you, which is also a lie. Um, and uh, man, like Vic is just playing so hard. Uh, and she's like, th that's why she needs to go. That's why Vic needs to go. Um, but I, Tara, I need you to act sad. I need you to, this cannot leak to Vic. That, that, that this is the plan, but uh, but if you if we get the veto, uh, we're gonna make this happen. Worst case scenario, Roe will go home. Don't worry. But Vic is the play. This is what we're gonna do. I mean, okay. I, if I, I know being on the block is is challenging. I know that like your your life is in the in, in the game is almost it could be over. Anything could happen. Pawns go home. Like I, I know all that rhetoric, but. I really feel that Beth would be is making her feel super secure here. And so the fact that she's still so paranoid that something's going to happen and she's going to be the target, like, to me, would tip me off that she must have ulterior motives and she must not be completely truthful because Doth protests too much. You know, she is saying too much about like, oh my, I'm so scared, I'm so scared being here. And Beth's like, you're not the target. I'm not wasting my HOH on you. I don't want you out. You're like, there's pretty much no scenario where you do go out. Uh, maybe if Brayden goes up, but like, that's not really an option because everybody's going to be fighting for this veto. Like, and so I, would be thinking that Tara you're not doing the right thing here you're not making Beth feel comfortable with like why are you so scared unless you have any plans to take Beth out so yeah uh, Beth uh, it was literally like uh, like no no offense Tara but like <laughs> you are not the, you are not the move this week <laughs> you are not a big enough move for me um and uh yeah, I mean, it's, it's Tara, uh, I mean, Tara does what she needs to in this conversation and the plan is still in place. Uh, but uh, but, you know, she will we'll talk. We'll talk more about the Tara. Tara Noya. Is that what we might start oh. going? At? Um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Tara also, by the way, by at the end of this conversation, she's just like, just just so, before I leave, just a quick question. Uh, why me? Why me and not Tina? It's always me. Nobody ever says <laughs> Tina's name. I, and I'm just like, I, I, and Beth's like, well, would you rather Tina on the block? Uh, and she said, well, no, 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 no. I'm just, I, ge genuinely, I'm just asking. I'm just curious. How come <laughs> nobody ever says Tina's name? Um, and uh, Beth gives a long answer, but the the, the, the summary of the answer is, uh, Tara, you talk more. 
It's true. Yeah. She does talk more, and she she's not as likable. Like, I mean, that's basically what Beth's saying, is, like, your mouth gets you into trouble, yes. and people don't like you. <laughs> uh, and, of course, the real answer is that Tina is in The Sunsetters, and that sure. is keeping her safe, and she's playing up that connection. Um, but but even if even if that wasn't the case, uh, I think Sarah would still be the target over Tina. Um, and, and this is actually, uh, I think, a good time to make this point, which is that uh, Beth keeps thinking that bringing Tina to the end is this great idea because Tina is seen as somebody that is just being dragged along by most of the house. But it's almost like she's forgetting that Tina is a sunsetter. And Tina is well-liked by the other side of the house. And if they learn that Tina has been playing both sides of the house for the whole game, they may not like it. I'm not sure how they'll react on a personal level, but I have a feeling that they're going to gain a lot of respect for how she's navigated the game. They're going to create a whole storyline in their head that's probably going to be more impressive than the reality of it. Um, <laughs> but I would not classify Tina as an easy goat to beat in the end. Uh, she She's well-liked, well-respected, and has some secret hidden weapons uh, that she can unleash. Um, so I think you have to be careful about the thinking that you can beat Tina here. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, I think Brayden right now is, is a safe bet, mm -hmm. but um, he's starting to do some good work, as I mentioned already. And I, I mean, I just I don't think that anybody's really that easy for her to beat at this point. Um, which is why, def oh, which ahead. is why I think it's a good thing that she's trying to make some some big moves here. I think that the, this is very important for her game. Definitely important for her game. But I just yeah, Tina, I think could take the win from her i don't i don't think that she i agree with you i don't think that she's the safe bet at all um especially because she's so liked especially because people go and try to talk to her like they talk to her to get to tara like they they she's like the middle person uh, for for a lot of different people and so a lot other people is going to be have been working with her and going to be able to see her game and they're going to be on the jury and they're going to be like no 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 this is what tara was doing i mean sorry tina was doing she was talking to us we were we were feeding her information she wasn't spreading it and so i think that the jury is probably going to also sell tina's game as well yeah ironically tara is the absolute right choice right like uh <laughs> tara can't tara would have a really hard time winning a jury um but uh but tara remains remains the target uh and that's that's why tina would be bad it's, uh, it all ties in um so uh beth is gonna talk with tina um, and, uh, Beth fills Tina in on, uh, what she's thinking. And, uh, and it's such a night and day conversation between Tina and Tara and how they approach Beth. Tina knows exactly how to approach this. I mean, Tina had set this up from before. She even references their conversation a few days ago where Tina had set up the fact that, hey, you know, Vic is, uh, is somebody that we need to watch out for. And, uh, hey, you, you know, big moves, big moves are important. What are you thinking jury wise? Um, because that's when Beth had been thinking about that and she talked to Jed and she talked to Tina right after and they had this conversation um, and, and Tina refers to it. She's like, this, well, yeah, this is kind of what we had talked about, right? This is such a huge move for you and, and the jury is going to respect it so much. This will allow you to win the game. Tina knows exactly how to present this uh, to, uh, to, to Beth in, in the way that Beth is thinking about it, right? Um, and Beth says, like, yeah, I need to get out from the shadow of these boys uh, and play my own game. And Tina's like, you go, girl. Uh, <laughs> you make that work. Um, and uh, and Beth just lights up. She's just like, this is exactly exactly why she's making this move and exactly uh, like what she wants to hear about it. Um, and, 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 and I think this is the kind of thing that will keep her persevering with this idea in the face of the guy's trying to shut it down uh is that uh she, like this is her move and this is what this is what allows her to win the game do you think that that tina will be able to take any credit for it or any or tina or tara for being like hey she wasn't planning on doing this move but we were able to like sweet talk her and get her to switch you know it from being tara as the target she was the target but you know what i mean I don't know that. So, so here's. So, I I love how Tina approaches this conversation. I'm. St mm -hmm. I I don't want people to uh, get you know a, 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 a take an implication from that that is beyond what I'm saying, which is that like I don't think Tina is uh, still. I don't think she's some mastermind. Um, I think that she has some really good instincts in conversations. I think that she knows how to talk to people. Um, and she has a really good read on the house most of the time. Um, but. 
but uh, she she's not like uh, I don't think that she's game aware enough to be able to say I made this happen. I think that she's going to say, well, Beth made a great move there, sure, but right, um, but this is what I did. Uh, so uh, I don't think that she would take credit. However, I think there are some people in the jury that um, that that may see it as a move that was done by the other side. Um, I think somebody like Roe is actually probably more likely to get the credit for this just because um, he's more he's of the, the focal target. point of the entire situation. So I don't expect Tina to get credit for this. I think if Tina's going to win a jury, it's going to be because of her social relationships um, with a little sprinkle of, you know, what could she have done? Uh, you like her enough that you'll create your own narrative for how she played the game um, rather than her actually making a good case for herself, I think. Okay, fair. I can see that for sure. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we'll see though. Uh, you know, I, I, she, she impressed me a lot in the beginning of the game. I've been yeah. not super impressed with her since then. Um, even though, again, I, I, I think she's just overall, she's like a good natural player. She has great instincts, um, but she's playing from behind. I mean, uh, having to play as one of the older people on the cast is a really tough place to play from. Um, and she hasn't been able to win competitions, which is really tough to, to do, uh, to manage and to navigate through the game. Her allies aren't winning competitions either, which is even tougher. Um, but, uh, but even so, she's managed to navigate for herself very well. And now she's starting to help manipulate things to her benefit, which is the final piece that she really needs to lock into place. Um, and so I, I, I don't think that she's some like top tier player by any means, <laughs> but uh, in a house like this where everything is pretty even, uh, she's finding a lot of success uh, so far. So um, do, do, do you think that she really, really likes Tara or is it like that this is her person because of circumstance? Because I, she does seem to have a good read and she is able to kind of be the Tara whisperer or whatnot. But I just can't imagine someone being able to hear her this whole time without having some judgment as to her character and like how how she is as a player um so do you think that she's just putting it on i i i do feel like she is sometimes very annoyed with tara okay. um <laughs> okay, especially that's, that's know, there's a conversation know. later where i felt like especially she was like oh my god <laughs> um but uh i think at the same time like you know it's i, I think it's really tough for somebody who is um, I actually don't know how old Tina, Tina is. I think 42. she's 42. 42. Like, uh, you know, over a decade older than most of the people in the house. Um, an entirely different stage of her life. Um, and, and Tara is, is the closest person to her. Uh, she's, she's a mother. She's, uh, somebody who, you know, has experienced more life. Um, and, uh, I think she just kind of clings to that as like the, the only sort of familiar um, you know, person that can relate to her in any kind of way. Uh, but even so, she gets on her nerves sometimes. Okay, good. Yeah. I just I just think she has to because she's so annoying. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Tara Stans. Uh, does Tara have stands? I don't know. I, I just, I'm just saying that just in case there's one because they're probably going to be a, the loudest voice. <laughs> uh, well, Beth tells Tina, she, you look, you need to keep Tara calm this week because I don't want her screwing anything up. Uh, and, Tara, and Tina's like, all right, I can, I can do that keep her calm i'm with you on this um so uh beth is then like i need jed where are you i need to talk to you um and uh and jed finds his way uh up to the hoh room and she tells jed all right i talked to ro he promised he wants to make a deal with you guys he won't go after you if we don't take him out this week beth and jed is like let's go i i'm willing to take ro off the block if that's the case i'll take him down we'll backdoor vic this is a great move. I love it. Um, and uh, and Beth is super excited. She's like, yes. And and it, it's like, wow, it's, uh, that was easy. That uh, She just convinced <laughs> Jed to go against his own interests. And he is like excited about it. And she's definitely lying to him about Ro not coming for him. Um, but he seems to be very on board here. Um, and he's like, uh, like, this is so exciting. Like, you're going to make this move. This, this is how you're going to beat me, Beth. Uh, this is a great move. <laughs> um, and, uh, they're like, oh, but Ty isn't going to like this, but he'll have to get over it. Yeah. I mean, 
I, I like the move. I think it's going to be exciting if it happens to go down this way. Um, I'm just wondering, though, like, is he really thinking it all the way through? Because I think, I don't know if this is the time or if it was another time in the, in the day where he, she was saying that it was going to be like two weeks safety from Rohan. He's like, oh, yeah, this is amazing to get two weeks safety. And if it's a, if it's a double eviction, he's not going to even be an option. I'm like, I don't think that all this is realistic here. Like, like I think it's completely the opposite. I think it's like, if it's a double eviction, you're 100% the option. But if it's any other week other than that, like, okay, maybe we can honor this two-week thing. So I feel like he should maybe think about it a little bit more. But um, I think he's excited about making a big move by, like, using the veto and, like, having some, like, excitement in the house. It, Judd gets really hyped about, <laughs> uh, about ideas. Um, so right now, he's fully on board. Things are gonna. Once he starts thinking about it with Ty a little later, things things are gonna shift a little again. Um, but in the meantime, Tara is freaking out. Uh, she thinks she's the real target this week, um, and Tina's like, "No, you're good. You don't need to worry. You're fine." Um, and Tara's like, "No, you don't understand. You're not the one who's going on the block, Tina. Uh, you you don't you didn't. Why did she take Crow?" to Wendy's and not me. <laughs> Why does she feel like Roe needs to be taken to Wendy's, but I don't need to be soothed over? Why? Why won't she take me to Wendy's, Tina? And and you know what happened? Every time I ask why she takes Roe to Wendy's, she says, oh, it's because we need to see what kind of dirt Roe has. Uh, and then I asked Jed and I asked Kiefer and they said the exact same thing. <laughs> Tina, they said the exact same thing. Why would all three of them say the exact same thing, Tina? Why wouldn't she take me to Wendy's? It's because <laughs> I'm the target. <laughs> Terranoia is so annoying. Um, yeah, terranoying. Terranoying is, is, is good. Um, I mean, I get it. I, you're on the block. You're paranoid. You know, you see him going to Wendy's. Like, maybe they're hatching out a plan to, like, work together. And, like, he's not going to go up anymore. And now it's going to be Tara as a target. Like, okay, yes, I can make that make sense. But also, though, if you guys are pushing for Victoria to be the backdoor replacement or the backdoor nominee, like, that means that she needs to have some sort of plan with Rohan moving forward, being like, hey, I know I'm going to be putting you up, but you're not the target here. And she has to finesse that and make sure that she's going to be coming out okay at the end of the week. So the fact that she's not going one step forward or like further and looking from it from Beth's perspective as to why she could possibly be wanting to take Ro to Wendy's, uh, it's, just, uh, it's just a flaw in her game and strategy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so Kiefer's also going to make an attempt uh, to to convince Tara to chill, but uh, it's not it's not going to work. The more people try to convince Tara to chill, uh, the the more upset she gets. Um, so uh, she's she's ha having a moment there. Um, in the meantime, uh, uh, Beth and Jed are going to tell Ty, "We want to do it. We want to backdoor Vic." Um, and uh, and Ty's like. Ah, that's exciting. I'm in. Let's do it. <laughs> um, and it's like, whoa, I did not expect that. He's like, let's let's go. Um, and so then they start talking about it. So if this person wins the veto, um, then, well, then we'll do it this way. And, and then Ty's like, wait a minute. <laughs> Here's my question, though. Uh, and so he starts thinking it through. And he's like, actually, now, now that I'm thinking about it, we, uh, but hold on. Roe is still in the game is the only problem. We need to take out Roe first. Uh, cause Ro is coming after us. Um, and, and Jed is like, that is a good point, Ty. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and Beth is like, well, but here's the thing, Ty, is that Ro has promised that he, he won't come after you guys. We will make a deal. Uh, and Ty's like, yeah, you can't believe Ro though. Uh, you know, he, he'll, he'll say whatever he, what he, he ever, whatever he needs to do to, to, to keep himself safe. Uh, we, we know that Ro is coming after us. Vic is not coming after us yet. Uh, and Beth's like, no, 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 Vic is coming after me. That's the thing. It's like, ah. Yeah, but uh, we know for sure Ro is coming after us. We don't know for sure that Vic is. Um, and, uh, and, and, and Beth keeps saying, like, I believe Ro. I really believe that he, will, he wouldn't do it. Um, and Ty's like, I don't think we can believe him. And, uh, and Jed's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ty, Ty's right. We can't, we can't believe Ro. Um, and, and all of a sudden, this is turning back around on Beth. And she's getting very, you can tell, she's getting very frustrated. 
Well, I think too is that because even if Ro came after the boys, I think she's more confident that Ty would be the one that left. And so I don't think that she, if she, if she, if she knew that Jed was like Ro's number one target, like if the out of the boys, I don't think that she'd be pushing this hard. So I can understand her being frustrated because she wants to make this move, but she also wants them to be okay with it because she doesn't want to be going against them um, with this move. But um, I think she has to also start realizing like, yes, Rohan is coming for them and it isn't in their best interest to really keep him so sorry you're gonna be frustrated here because it's not really a great move for them yeah um <laughs> and and that's what she said she's like look this is this is kind of awkward because it's it, what's best for me is to take vic out and what's best for you is to take Ro out and that does kind of set ty back and he's like all right well I don't, maybe we can leave it up to destiny see how the veto plays out um and uh and the thing with ty is that he's like well the thing about vic is that she, sure she maybe put maybe puts up you beth but she'll put you up next to brayden we can easily just vote brayden out we have the numbers um and but if ro wins he puts me and jet up and and then replaces us with you uh he'll put all three of us up we can't get out of that um and uh and 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 you know beth doesn't have i mean the obvious answer to this is that Vic isn't stupid. You saw what Vic did w during the Toya week. Uh, Vic is not stupid enough to put Brayden on the block, knowing she doesn't have the numbers. Um, but uh, she doesn't. She doesn't come back with that, and so it kind of ends in a stalemate here. Kiefer's gonna join, uh, and he backs up Ty and Jed. Roe has to go. Uh, Vic is the back, the backup plan, but uh, but Roe has to go. Um, and uh, and Ty is like, well, okay. Now that we've kind of decided, we're gonna maybe leave it up to fate. What about the, the, this plan is out? Like everybody knows about it. Uh, that's not good. If this gets back to Vic, she'll turn on us. Um, and Beth is like, yeah. And then at that point, we'll definitely have to backdoor her. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and Ty's like, well, I think that we should tell Vic that the other side is pitching to put her on the block. Uh, throw them under the bus. Get, get out in front of this. Um, and uh, and I, I think that's the plan. Um, and, and Beth is like, I don't, I don't, I don't think I want to do that though. I'd rather just like, if she came to me, I, I would shut it down. He's like, no, 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 we got to tell her now because then, uh, otherwise she'll, she'll suspect that we were considering it. And, and this is where Beth really just puts her foot down. She says, I'm not doing that. I don't want to do that. Um, I'm not going to tell her if she comes to me, I'll shut it down, but I, I'm not telling her. I think that she should be coming out in front here. Um, she, I think she's just scared of Victoria, to be honest. Like, she just doesn't want to have to lie to her face. Like, she doesn't want to get the wrath. She doesn't want Victoria to stay and then come after her. I think she's just terrified of Victoria. Um, but I do think it would be smart for her to come out in front of the story, like, make sure that, like, hey, like, we're, we're in this together. The ghost peppers, that we're a thing. I'm giving you information. That's what Vic always wants. She wants to be in the know. She wants to have information. She wants to know when people are talking about her. Like, she needs that. And so they need to keep remembering that that's what feeds Victoria to keep her kind of safe. If she starts feeling as though she's being left out of plans or that people are, aren't considering her as to be somebody to talk to, like, look what she did with Brayden and Austin. She's just like, you didn't you didn't pitch to me. And like, I'm the HOH. You didn't know about it, but you didn't pitch to me. Like, and she's getting upset that they didn't campaign. Like, she will definitely be upset if it was even spoken about that her being an option by the other side and she, they didn't come to her as her alliance members to let her know this was happening well i think the problem is that beth still wants to put vic on the block uh oh, on so, the block yeah. yeah yeah so uh so you know obviously she doesn't want to warn her ahead of time <laughs> um and uh and honestly i think even if she had no intention of doing it i think that vic would use this as an excuse to put beth i mean i think she's gonna put beth up on uh, anyway but she would definitely just use this as an excuse to put beth up um and she'd honestly probably use it as an excuse to put jet up like you guys both we're in talks about backdooring me last week and so if you hadn't it's done that anyways. <laughs> if you hadn't done that then i wouldn't be doing this and i would have put brayden up but now i have to put jet up next to beth guys <laughs> it's uh, if only you had told me even sooner than you had already told me then maybe we could have done something here but just the way it is <laughs> it's true she's so frustrating to work with yeah i mean i don't think you really could do anything right with with victoria she's just gonna do whatever she wants to do in the moment mm -hmm. so that's true 
So uh, <laughs> after this conversation, Ty and Jed talk alone, and alone they reiterate that there's no way they can let Beth take out Vic this week if Roe is still an option. Roe needs to go first. Vic wants to be with them, and they can protect Beth from Vic if they need to. Um, he Because they did such a great a job with Toya. Um, and uh, he thinks that they should revisit the idea of telling Vic about the backdoor pitch. He really thinks that they should get out in front of that. Um, and Jed agrees. And so uh, they, they plan to go back to Beth with that idea a little bit later. But Beth is not done either. Beth is going to go to Brayden and tell Brayden, I really want Ro to win the, bat win the veto so I can backdoor Vic. Uh, and Brayden's like, that's exciting. I like this. Uh, that's a good <laughs> idea. Um, and she says, yeah, the problem is the boys don't like it. They want Ro to go. They keep pushing me to not do it. He's, and Brayden says, well, of course, of course they are. That's 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 better for them, but it's not better for you. Um, and uh, and he says, well, here's the here's the thing, Beth. Vic wants you gone. She's like, I know. That's what I've just found out today. He's like, yeah. She came to me last week um, before the vote, and she was like, look, if you're gonna stay, I need to know who your targets are. And uh, I tried to not say anything, but she was like, I need to know names, Braden. Um, and so I, you know, he, she wanted me to make a big move, so I said, Jed and Ty um and she was like okay okay uh and like not not beth it's like no um and he asked her who she would nominate and she was like i shouldn't say but <laughs> beth and jed oh i shouldn't have said that but yeah beth and jed um and and the way that he acts it out too adds such validity to the story uh because that's exactly how she would say that um <laughs> And so uh, Beth is like, okay, well, we need to we need to tell Jed this. Um, and and Brayden, I need you to talk to Ty because he's being so pushy about this. It's very frustrating. Um, and uh, but but Brayden's like, I don't I don't think I have a lot of sway with Ty. Uh, so I don't know if I, I don't know if that'll help much. But uh, but we can definitely uh, you know tell this information uh, to them and see see where that goes. Yeah, I mean, I, I like Brayden being involved in these kind of conversations right now. Um, I think he's he's a really he's really good socially, and he kind of makes it seem as though he doesn't have an agenda that he wants to get across. He's just kind of gabbing with Beth and giving her some information, but doesn't seem like it's 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 calculated. So I think that he has a lot more pull with Ty than he might be letting on. And I think even later on in the day, um, Jed is, is kind of joking about the fact that they're they're in a show. Romance, uh, Ty and Jed. So I think he's got some sway. Yeah, I mean, they Jed and Beth were talking about like uh, like Ty doesn't <laughs> talk to us anymore. He's all he's always with Brayden now. <laughs> They're cuddling. Um, so Brayden's actually going to run this conversation right to Roe uh, and fill Roe in on his conversation with Beth, uh, basically saying, like, I think Beth really wants to do this, but the guys are pushing back um, and they're trying to block this play. Uh, and uh, Rose says, well, thank you. Thank you for telling me. Um, Rose says, all right, I don't, so I don't think the guys are going to take me down no matter what, but hopefully we can get Beth to believe that she needs to do this. Um, and, and Beth did give Brayden the okay, like, hey, if you're playing in the veto, please use the veto on Roe. Um, so Brayden, if played, will use it on Roe. Roe will be picking Brayden in uh, for house guest choice if he gets that option. Um, uh, in addition to that, you know, Tina and Tara uh, will be playing. Um, I think both of them would use it on Tara. Uh, and if Tara comes down, I think Beth would just go ahead and be like, look, I'm doing this. Um, it's really just if uh, Ty or Jed or Kiefer or Vic win the veto that uh, it probably will not be used at this point, at least. Um, and uh, Brayden asks Ro, like, would you really not take a shot if you made a deal with the guys and, and they use the veto on you? And Ro says, oh, I'd consider it, but <laughs> I'd regret it if I didn't take the shot and then they ended up taking it first. So probably not. And that's that's big brother you know you can bounce those checks you gotta save yourself and so i think that they need to like jen and ty need to remember this that like people are gonna say whatever they need to say in order to stay this week um and I mean, I, I want to see it happen, so just it'll be very exciting if, you know, if Ro gets saved by Jed next week, double eviction, both Jed, Ty, back to back, like, 
exciting. Um, and they would have definitely have buyer's remorse there. But, you know, well, I, I, I'm interested to see how it plays out because it's kind of bad. For somebody, it's going to be barely bad. <laughs> yeah. Uh, should also be worth noting, by the way, in the talks between Jed and Ty, um, they are saying, like, Ro needs to go first, but they do agree Vic is 100% next, uh, especially if it's a double eviction. So uh, even if Vic does survive this backdoor situation, she is still the prime target right now for Jed and Ty in the double eviction, um, which uh, means that uh, that would be... Honestly, that's not the way I want to see I If, if Vic is going to go either this week to a back door by Beth or next week in the middle of a double eviction, I think I'd rather it be this week with the back door. I think there's a lot more exciting stuff that will happen. If she just gets, you know, chopped in the... Which is exactly what they want. The house guests are always trying to remove the... We got rid of Danny <laughs> in the triple. We're going to get rid of Vic in the double. Uh, like, no, stop. We want you to suffer. <laughs> yes we want i want to see them work uh, like even though it's going to be a lost cause like I, I would love to see victoria try to stay like that would be really really fun yeah sit in your own mess Yes, because I'm just like the whole time watching her play. I'm like, this has got to come back to haunt her. Like, there's no way that she's going to be able to get through this. And I've been saying to everybody, I'm like, if she gets to the final two, I will eat my words with saying that she's a terrible game player. But like, I just want to see her. I need to see her dominated. I do. Yeah, I do. So uh, Beth is going to go to Jed and tell him what uh, Brayden told her that uh, that Vic would said that she would put up her and Jed. Um, and he said, well, if that's true, then Vic needs to go. And uh, it's like, w this is Groundhog Day because <laughs> Jed is back on board with the plan. Uh, she calls Brayden up. Brayden tells Jed all about all the things uh, that Vic was also, she was trying to pretend to Brayden that she was the only reason the vote didn't flip on him last week um, and all this, all this stuff. And, and now Jed is back on board. He's going to use the veto on Roe. And she's, he's excited about this too. And I'm like, I mean... I think that she should be the backdoor plan. I don't know if it should be the plan, though, especially now we know that it's Jerry as well. Like, it seems like Victoria would be very bitter. And so if Jed were to use the veto on Rohan and get out Victoria, I don't think that she, they can come back with her vote from that. And so that should be something that they're considering yeah. as well. Uh, well, they get they they bring Ty and, and Kiefer in. They tell Ty and Kiefer in. Back on board. We're back during Vic. She said that she was going to put up Jed and Beth. Um, and Ty and Kiefer, again, are going to push back. Uh, they say, no, no, no. Vic is lying to Brayden. Of course, she's not going to tell Brayden the true plan. Because the true plan is it would be Beth and Brayden. Uh, she's not going to tell Brayden she's putting him up. Um, so, uh, you know, that's just, uh, I don't think it's true. I think she's putting up you and Brayden. Um, and, uh, it's, it's really a terrible argument from, uh, like, I appreciate that Ty is pushing and he should be pushing because that's, uh, you know, the right move for him. But the argument that like, but Beth, only, you would only go up on the block against somebody else and you'd survive. Is she, is she, yes, she's going to put you on the block, but don't worry about it is a really bad argument to the HOH. If Beth had more <laughs> of a backbone to stand up to them, uh, I think in most scenarios, she just, uh, like, uh, is a, a player would just be like, yeah, okay then, you agree. She's putting me on the block. She's going home this week. <laughs> Back me up, Alliance. Um, which is honestly what she should be doing at this point, in my opinion. Uh, the, the trying to, like, subtly push thing it only goes so far. It reaches a point where you're giving other people, you're giving them the option to shut you down. And the further you try to push in the small way, it's only going to piss them off because they're like, I ought to shut this down. Why do you keep pushing? I, and I say this a lot, actually. Um, when you're the HOH and you have a move that you need to, to be made, um, you just need to put your foot down and be bold about it right away. It's uh, remember Memphis, right? Let's take notes from Memphis of all people. In week two of Big Brother 22, when Memphis wins, he's, he puts his foot down immediately. His entire line is super pissed at him at the start of the week. But at the end of the week, they're already so used to the fact that there's nothing they can do that they're back on board with him. Uh, you have to get it out of the way and make sure that you get your way and then they can deal with it later. Um, and, uh, and, and, and genuinely, I think that's what Beth should be doing right now. Um, but, uh, you know, cause I don't think the guys 
would have the, uh, hold on. The audacity. <laughs> you, you pulled it, finally. <laughs> I don't think they would have the audacity to, to actively go against Beth if she put her foot down. Um, I think that they would do what she wants. If she told them, no, this is what I want, and I want you guys to back me up, they'd be very annoyed about it, but I don't think that they would vote against her or uh or you know use the veto in a way that that went against her um so um i i think that they wouldn't remain as loyal to her for the end game but that doesn't matter to beth because she doesn't plan on going to the end game with them anyway they would be loyal to her in the short term and that's all that matters right now uh so i think that's what beth should be doing um and uh should do if they are if they do end up winning the veto and maybe she plans on it if they win the veto but it might be too late by then yeah, I, I do wish that she was being a little more assertive with what she wants. So she wants to step out of the shadow of the boys. Well, she can't allow them to be steering her, her decision-making here, what it is her HOH. Yes, bounce ideas off of them. Yes, discuss, like, different options and why things might be better or worse for whom and, and or whatnot. But the fact is that it is infinitely better for her to keep Rohan in the game and get Victoria out it's it's better for her and she needs to be looking at that and i totally agree with you with like if if i knew that somebody was going to be putting me up for sure exactly these guys to go yeah they gotta go whatever scenario it is like victoria likes these big moves so to the fact that you think that she's going to be like feel like comfortable with brayden being like the most likely option which is most likely untrue like victoria is going to be like well i needed to put up somebody because i needed you to go i need to make sure that you didn't have a vote so i have to put up jensen and or something to that effect like she she doesn't care she makes her decisions in the moment and i i I really think that I agree with you that Beth should be putting her foot down and saying like, this is what I need to have to happen for my game. Yeah. Um, right. So, uh, so it, Jed starts taking the middle path again. He's like, well, I'm not sure which way we should go. Um, Vic, Ty says, look, Vic leaving is better for your game personally, Beth, but it's not better for our game collectively. Um, and Kiefer says, yeah. And that's the decision that I made when I was HOH. I took out Kyle for the good of the collective rather than taking out Ro for the good of me. Um, you know, you do know that Ro won the veto, yeah, right? Yeah, Ro like, won the veto. Uh, he would have gone home. <laughs> now, to be fair to Kiefer, he did say that Kyle was the target over Ro in the first place. Um, and Kiefer did make that decision to play collectively over himself. But that was a bad move, Kiefer, uh, for you personally. Um, but it was great for the guys. Um, but, uh, so, uh, that's, that's kind of, uh, Ty also says, look, uh, everyone's going to go after Vic next week. Same night might not be true of Ro. Uh, we, we can't discount the fact that Ro might be working with Brayden and Tara and Tina. Um, and Vic is, is certainly not. So, uh, so we need to take out Ro first, then we can go Vic. Um, but, uh, it, so it again kind of ends in a stalemate and it's, it's kind of just kind of like, well, I guess it will come down to the veto. If Roe wins, then this isn't even a discussion. We're taking out Vic. Yeah. I mean, I, that's, I, it, that's exciting too. Um, I think that that gets the, the least amount of blood on her hands. We'll say, I really don't think that it's a good idea for Jed to be using the veto and taking, taking down Rohan. I just, I think that it just looks bad, especially like if Rohan ends up winning and takes him, like takes him out. Like it just, it's just bad all around. So I think that leaving it up to fate in this scenario, if they're both, if they're kind of content with the fact that Victoria would be going up as a replacement, I think that they should just leave it up to that personally. Yes. So uh, a couple of things to look out for here. Um, Roe also was in possession of the information that, uh, okay. that Vic had planned on putting Beth and Jed on the block. Uh, so he can kind of help confirm that information. I don't think that Roe saying it is going to have hold that much weight with the guys, but it could. I, I think there's a chance that if one of Jed or Ty wins, especially Jed, probably not Ty, but especially Jed, if Jed wins, if Roe handles a conversation with Jed correctly and confirms certain information and makes a genuine enough promise, I do think there's a chance that back up from Beth uh, to help confirm all of it. Uh, there's a chance that they could convince Jed to use the veto on Roe um, and then take out Vic. But Definitely not a guarantee. 
I would guess that Ty will not do it under uh, almost any circumstances. Um, uh, Kiefer, I do not think will use it under any circumstances. Uh, Vic, I do not think will use it uh, under any circumstances. Unless, again, uh, I say doesn't use it. I say Vic obviously is not going to cause her own backdoor by having the veto. Um, but, uh, but Vic actually could use it, I think, if Ro goes to her and says, Hey, the plan was to backdoor you, by the way. Uh, you're going to need me in this game because they're all against you. Um, uh, I think that uh, that could lead to some interesting things. Who knows? Um, I would guess that she still doesn't believe it and doesn't use it on him. But uh, anything could happen at that point. Um, so that's uh, Ty, Vic, and Kiefer would all lead to Vic being safe. Um, Jed, not sure. Uh, Tina and Tara, not entirely sure. But I again, I... Uh, the plan would be if Tina or Tara won the veto, either Brayden goes up and Ro goes home, or Beth goes through with the uh, the Vic backdoor. Anyway, she says, look, it's my call. I'm going to put Vic up on the block, uh, and I need you guys to back me up and send her home. I don't know for sure that she would do that, but I think that she would. Um, but she might not. Uh, and then, of course, uh, Ro would use it on himself. Brayden would definitely use it on Ro, at least right now. Um, and so, uh, there are a lot, a lot of different, uh, options and possibilities for different veto scenarios. There will be, uh, three people sitting out of the veto. One of them is going to be Beth for sure. Uh, and then outside of that, only two people will be sitting out of the veto. So most people will be playing, uh, or sorry, uh, not only two people, uh, three additional people. Cause only five people play. I keep forgetting that. Uh, so it's four, four people total will not be playing, including Beth. Um, so uh row and tara plus three extras who those three extras are will matter a lot if brayden and tina brayden and tina have are, are two of the people who have the most chance of being drawn because um tara and uh and row both plan on choosing them for uh house guest choice uh beth would probably choose jed um and and probably use that as like uh hey jed you know, I, I chose you to do this. Don't screw me. Please use this. Um, and that would probably give, uh, make it more likely that he would use it. Uh, but uh, this veto draw is going to matter a lot. The veto outcome is going to matter even more. And then uh, who knows from there? This is a very exciting week. It's a good week. I'm just kind of like, I want to see what happens. Whatever happens, I think it will be interesting. So, yeah, it's kind of, it's pretty fun. <laughs> yeah. Most fun so far. I so think. Uh, I think there's a pretty good chance of veto competition is today. I'm not entirely sure. Nominations did not happen last night. But what they did last week is that they did uh, nominations, veto draw, veto uh, uh, competition all in the same day. Uh, so it would not surprise me if they did something similar today. I'm not sure if uh, we've been able to catch it on the feeds yet. But um, a lot, a lot could go down here. So uh, <laughs> looking forward to it. Me too. Can't wait. Can't wait. It's just, it's just so refreshing though to be excited about a week of Big Brother because <laughs> I think I'm just uh, having PTSD from BB22 All Stars. So this is just like I'm just like give it to me. I whatever. Be bad. Do do bad moves. Like whatever you do. Like I'm enjoying it whatsoever. Like it's all good. So yes, I'm with you here. I'm yeah. loving it. Massive power struggle happening. If Beth pulls yes. off this move, I really do think it's it's huge for her. Uh, if she pulls it off, if she doesn't pull it off i think she's done uh like this is literally do or die for beth she has uh she has gone way uh it's past a point of no return <laughs> way past a point of no return um with the vic plan and uh if it doesn't go through i think she's dead in the water if it does yeah. go through i think her position massively improves and the house is is it remains pretty level i think um where uh the guys are still in, a, in an okay spot but definitely not quite as good as it was before um mm -hmm. or could have been and uh and and the, the house remains very balanced and so i think that it would be very interesting if this happened and i feel as though um a wall comp is coming up soon so that will probably be interesting i wonder if that's how they'll leave after the double eviction like if they'll leave it in um had a household in process oh well probably not right because the wall takes a lot of time to set up that's true um so uh i could may maybe maybe buzzkill right that's when that's what everyone wants uh right 
Um, and that just requires setting up some buzzers. So um, I could see that being an endurance that, that that plays out after a double. Yes, I mean, I'm, I don't want to be thinking too far ahead, but I'm like, just like, oh, I know, I want to know what happens. I need to know, like, if, if, if the double, who's going to go out? Like, I am, I am excited and uh, kind of like a kid at Christmas waiting to hear the results of all these things that are happening. I'm like, I want to know now. All right. Well, uh, <laughs> anything else that you wanted to bring up from yesterday? No, only that Tara's annoying. Um, you know, she was like, one thing that she was say that she said that bothered me a lot was like, you know, this is the only conversation that I'm gonna be, gonna have with you, and like, I'm putting the, my trust in you and the boys because like, I, I really would lose all my my trust in you if you guys don't follow through with this. And I'm just kind of like, her their threats about it have been kind of frustrating because like she is coming after them. Like, it's not like she's being some saint here. And so, uh, and and saying things like, oh, I don't want my kids to see me in arguments with people and whatnot. But like, she's actually just not being that kind about people anyway so uh, there's a part of me still that it's not the move i know but it's it just kind of would like to see her leave the game soon like i don't want to see her win the wall comp because she probably will and i'm seeing seeing her with some power wouldn't be my favorite uh, week at the house oh, well uh that's what we have for you then thank you guys so much for joining us today i will of course be back tomorrow morning at 11 a.m eastern to update you on everything that happens today on the big brother canada nine live feeds should be should be exciting, so make sure you tune in. Uh, I'll also be back in just a couple of hours to talk about The Circle UK. Uh, it's been an interesting week over on The Circle, so make sure you tune in to that as well. Um, and, of course, uh, we'll be back um, Monday night with a Monday night recap of everything that uh, goes down on that episode. Um, I also talked to Austin uh, the other day. Uh, so that video is up if you guys are interested in checking that out. If you did not see it at the uh, attached to the previous update uh, in the in the audio feed. Um, so check all of that stuff out. You can also find me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Taryn Armstrong. Um, I've been streaming a lot of Fall Guys. We're going to play some Among Us this weekend um, and also just hang out and uh, chat about Big Brother sometimes. So find me there as well. Chantel, where can people find you? You can find me and Janelle at my YouTube channel, which is Reality Realist with three S's, and on Twitter at Chan underscore 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 Fran. Happy birthday. There you go. <laughs> uh, thank you guys so much for joining us. We'll see you next time. <laughs>